Markets and for global investors, troublesome debt is still an underlying problem. Moody's Investor Service says there's $49.5 trillion of sovereign debt outstanding. Add to that concerns raised after the ratings agencies lowered the outlook on government debt issued by Spain and Greece. All of this happening in the last week or so since we spoke last to Jim Stenning from Big Securities. He joins me back now in the studio. Good morning. Jim, good morning to you. So obviously um, these developments, the, the the cut to the credit ratings for Greece and that the ratings outlook downgrade for Spain. Mm. All of this just bringing into focus, I guess, the implications of big government spending that's happened and um, the implications for Europe and the US. You mm. say, though, despite the markets being worried about this, there's an upside here for Australia. Yeah, look, there is. I think, um, you know, obviously uh, Greece and, and, as you mentioned, Spain, it's a deteriorating story. Um, Australia is very much a uh, you know, come out of this crisis um, uh, looking very good. So, so I think in, in terms of a sovereign debt, sovereign debt investor's choice, I mean Australia looks more and more attractive. I think from the Euro European perspective, in their, their backyard, they've got their, these problems with these uh, parts of the European Union. So um, Australia really is, a, is an appealing place to, to park funds. Is that a prediction, or are you, are you in contact with global um, fixed income specialists talking to this about this to you? Yeah, look, I mean, well, recently, I actually returned last week from Europe um, and, uh, you know, we have been uh, talking to a number of parties over there, a broad range of investors, and, and Australia is a very, uh, is recognised as, as a very attractive uh, place to put funds. Okay, so you, you'd expect 2010 is kind of the year for Australia in that way? Well, I do. I think, it, I think it's going to play a more important role. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when we look at um, how, how uh, particularly our banks and governments are sourcing capital, the offshore investment is, is a key part of that. Okay. On matters back at home, we've, or oh, specifically here, in the, and another development in the last week or so, um, ASIC's put out some proposals for the retail bond market. Now, this is supposed to be a big up-and-coming area for Australia. Mm -hmm. um, what prompted this particular review, though, that we've um, got in the last few days? Um, well, I think um, logic or sanity. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. Look, I mean, uh, in the uh, document, the uh, the ASIC, um, you know, quote uh, or, or mention that uh, it's a sort of an, a follow on from a, a consultation paper early in the year yeah. about rights issues. Uh, consultation paper 105, I think it think it was. Um, but realistically, I think that one of the um, one of the things the GFC has has demonstrated is that um, you know, a, a particularly retail investors mm -hmm. need need more of a choice, and and so it's not just cash or equities. Um, making making uh, bond, the bond market uh, available or access to the bond market easy for retail investors is, is, is a key component of having a, an efficient and less volatile capital market. And this is largely the, what the proposals are based on, making it easier and to understand and more accessible. That's right. I mean, as part of this, um, ASIC have actually released uh, an, an education uh, document or a document about corporate bonds that's great. It, it's, um, it's very helpful to uh, any uh, prospective investor. Okay. Um, and, and, and realistically, the model they're proposing is a, is a listed model, so that uh, provides transparency and liquidity and efficiency. So I think it, it, it does look good. I mean, I have to, we're going to respond to the paper. Um, and so we've got until February to do that. So we'll go through it in detail and, and, and offer our, our uh, two bobs worth. If Initial like. thoughts though, has it been welcomed by the industry? Yeah, look, I think it, I think it'll be welcomed by by all the stakeholders. Um, you know, there, there may be some issues around uh, you know the size limits or the, or the listing uh, requirements or whatever. But but um, but generally speaking, this is definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, it won't won't be implemented till till uh, April May. Mm -hmm. um, so there's still some time to go. Um, so we'll see how it unfolds. And a lot of from from comments that I'm reading from the industry, it can only work if it does actually. Um, allow or make it easier for people to understand the risks and this is really important because we had the news as well in the last uh, few days I think that um, Standard and & Poor's and Moody's have quit the local retail market they're not going to be um, basically offering ratings out there on information on ratings to to retail investors yeah, look, this is a real it's you know, interesting it a bit down isn't it I mean I suppose it? I mean rating agencies don't rate equities either but um, yeah. but anyway look I, I think that sort of that sort of saga, if you like, is yet to play out in full. Um, it's quite sort of, I can't sort of get my mind around how um, an issuing entity uh, can have a wholesale rating <laughs> uh, from, a, from Standard & Poor's and Moody's and for that not to be yeah. uh, made available or, or, or for, for retail investors to be able to understand that. Um, can, they, so can retail investors still I suppose they can still get that information. Though, well, that, that's the problem, I think. I okay. think that, that in terms of the disclosure documentation, there may, there may be problems oh. around mentioning uh, that in those oh, documents. Right. So, so it's, I think it's a little bit, um, a, a little bit odd in a way, uh, but I'm certain these things will, will unfold. But, but having said that, I mean, you know, 
all investors should uh, should get as much research as they possibly can, and it's not necessarily rating rating agencies uh, are the only people that can provide that. So, but what would you see as the ultimate impact of taking that rating out of the market? Are you actually going to see less new issues, prevent new issues? I don't think like so. I don't think so. I think it would have been a convenient uh, convenient had the status quo uh, remained, um, but I don't see it as being a, a, a deal breaker. Okay. Um, a lot of talk about mortgages and bananas and Westpac, etc. But yeah. um, term deposits is something yeah. I want to chat to you about as well, though. Um, you're saying there's a bit of an anomaly in the, the term deposit market at the moment. Yeah, Tell it, us it, why. Well, um, I mean, you talk Westpac, interestingly, you know, they've been uh, maligned for raising their, their home lending rate. But one yes. thing they're doing is they're doing a lot of investors a, a big favour. They're paying up, um, you know, huge rates uh, yep. for term deposits. And this is, this is something that's, uh, you know, we're seeing uh, across across the banking sector, uh, we're seeing very aggressive rates being paid. So up to uh, approximately 7% in the one year. And then if you overlay the fact that that has a government guarantee, uh, so that's a risk-free investment, uh, that's a fairly uh, fairly attractive return. There's also, you know, we're, we're approaching 7.5-8% out, out along the yield curve from the humble old term deposit. It's, it's really interesting. I mean, if you look at uh, that you know, 6.8 to 7% in the one year. That's 2% over over a benchmark over the benchmark bank bill rate mm. um, for zero risk. Now, any fund manager would uh, would uh, would very much like to achieve Absolutely. those sorts of returns, and it's coming from the humble old term deposit. So, I think it's, this is a really an opportunity for investors to 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 um, take a piece of that. I think. Okay, so literally, so you're advising jump into cash. Well, I think into the you know, the, on a risk-adjusted return basis, these are these are levels that yeah. um, we haven't seen for a long time. If, if you look at um, a government bond rate in the one year, it's around four and a quarter. So you know, arg there's an argument there for for fund managers to sell all of their all of their uh, government bonds mm -hmm. and go and put the money into uh, government guaranteed term deposits. So and obviously, all of these banks, they, they there's so much competition out there. They want these funds. They do. That's yeah. right. I think you know, obviously, um, you know, the term deposits or deposit funding is is one. Uh, one way they fund their balance sheet mm. uh, and they need to maintain certain ratios. So this, it's very competitive and in fact the margins we're seeing now are pushing the levels at the very peak around this time last year. So 2010, the year of the retail depositors, do you think? Well, yeah, I think yeah, interest rate investment uh, for retail investors is, is going to develop and flourish in 2010. Jim, great to get across all of that. We covered a lot of ground today, so thank Thanks, you very Paul. much. That's Jim standing there, Managing Director of Fig.